President Armadine, Dr. Nelson, Dr. Johnston, Dr. Shoemaker, Dr. Hope, Dr. Giza, Mr. Emery, members of the Board of Trustees of BGEA and Wheaton College, and friends that have gathered here on this beautiful, typical, warm uh, day here in Chicago. I'm saying that for the benefit of people that are listening on 800 radio stations throughout the world. Uh, the wind is blowing and the flag at Blanchard is beautiful and uh, people love to applaud because it keeps their hands warm. And uh, it is a great privilege for me to be here today to participate and I can assure you that the message that I had prepared which would have lasted uh, a few extra minutes will be greatly shortened. And I'll be editing as I go along so that you can go back to the beaches and back to the pools and enjoy uh, a beautiful uh, fall day. But I have to admit that I was somewhat curious about how you lay the cornerstone of a building which has already been built. Most of us think of a cornerstone as the first stone which is laid to a new building. But then I read recently that some scholars believe that the word cornerstone in the Bible can sometimes mean capstone or the last stone that is placed in a structure. It may be the stone which actually keeps the walls of a building standing or it's like the keystone of a stone arch. Now, I'm not sure that the stone we are laying today is going to keep this building from falling down because I heard some things inside when the wind blowing a moment ago. But I'm sure that Harold Anderson and his wonderful group of people have got it so that it will withstand almost any sort of wind and storm. But it's my hope that this cornerstone will be a symbol, a symbol of all the plans and goals which have led to the construction of this building. My prayer is that this cornerstone will remind us for all time and for those who see it in the years to come, the reasons for which this building has been built. It is also my prayer that it would encourage future generations, if there are any, to work and pray and study so that the gospel of Jesus Christ might be continually spread throughout the world. I'm convinced that every generation needs to be evangelized. I think the words that Alan Emery read a few moments ago are especially appropriate for us today. He read from Ephesians 2.20 these words, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Christ is our foundation. He is the keystone, the capstone who makes everything hold together. And in a world in which we see so much tension, a world in which is filled with fear, in which suicide is now the number one killer among students throughout the United States, this is the moment to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and in the past few days, we've seen the Pope come to America. He comes from Eastern Europe. That had its attraction. The first non-Italian Pope in a long time. Also his own charisma, but there was something else. There was an outpouring of American people, I believe, who are searching for something. They're searching for someone or something that believes in moral and spiritual values and has the courage to say so. They're wanting a leader, a leader that will stand up and talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the leader and who can meet all the needs of our hearts. What does it mean to have Christ for the cornerstone? First, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of Wheaton College. The motto of Wheaton is for Christ and his kingdom. More than anything else, Wheaton is distinctive because of its commitment to Jesus Christ. The commitment is not just in words, but in deed. I believe God has brought to this campus throughout history and today an unusual combination of people, men and women, who are committed to Jesus Christ and who are seeking to serve Him as faculty and staff. I believe also that God has brought an unusual group of students here 
both in the past and now. Students who are seeking God's will for their lives and want to be the best equipped servants of God that they possibly can be. And some of them are here from all over the world. Every continent is represented here today as they have come back for homecoming to the place where they studied and where their roots are very deep and they've gone to the ends of the earth proclaiming the gospel and doing social work as well. This has not happened accidentally. It's happened because this college was founded with Christ as the cornerstone. And it has happened because there have been dedicated people throughout Wheaton's history who have worked and prayed and struggled and sacrificed to keep Wheaton College true to that commitment. This campus has grown and changed as the years have gone by, as those of us that come back a few years later can see. And it's grown colder too in October. <laughs> but its strong commitment to make Christ the cornerstone has never wavered and has not wavered today. I sat in on the Board of Trustees meeting yesterday and as Dr. Del Nelson, the chairman of the board, led the board and Dr. Armading uh, spoke and others spoke, I saw that Wheaton was the same Wheaton that I attended here in, 19, in the early 1940s with its strong commitment to Christ and his kingdom. And that's the primary reason why we felt as a board of our organization that Wheaton College was the right place for this building because many cities and other institutions had asked us to come. Some said, you can build this building and we'll pay for it. We'll give you the land and everything. But we felt that in the context of Wheaton College, this would be a place that it would be kept for Christ and his kingdom in the generations to come. And as we lay this cornerstone, we need to remind ourselves again that Christ is the cornerstone of this center, not just Wheaton College, but of this center. It's a beautiful building, and I congratulate all who've had a part in designing it and working on it. But a building is neutral. Like most things, it can be used for good or it can be used for evil. The important thing is not just the physical plant, impressive as that may be. The important thing is what is done with it. The important thing is the vision and the purpose which inspires the programs that will go on here. And more than anything else, my hope and my prayer is that Jesus Christ will be the foundation the cornerstone of all that takes place here and that the proclamation of his gospel will always be the focal point of the activities and the programs of this building. I'm thankful that this building will also be the home of the Wheaton Graduate School, which has such an important role to play in the future of Christian higher education throughout the world. I believe this structure could become a focal point of evangelical graduate students going to all the nations of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. My prayer is that this graduate school will continue to grow in its academic stature and at the same time increase its emphasis on evangelism and missions. One of the greatest needs in the church today is for preachers, people who know how to communicate the gospel as well as knowing the gospel in their heads and their hearts. And it's my prayer that the School of Communications and the School of Psychology and all the other schools that make up the graduate school will do just that. And I'm sure that 10 years from now, we will look back and see ways in which this center has been used, ways that right now we can't even dream of. And as long as Christ is kept at the center of everything, as long as he is the cornerstone, this building will be used of God to train leadership which will have a profound effect throughout the world church and the society in which we live. If Christ is the cornerstone, then the zeal and the commitment which marked the first century church will mark the programs of this center. Christ is also the center and the cornerstone of our daily lives. We live in an age when many people have lost any sense 
of meaning in their lives. I read recently that it is predicted that teenage suicide will become one of the most critical problems in the next decade, as I mentioned a moment ago. It already is a major problem. But Christ can give new meaning and direction. We're not here by chance. God has placed us here. And the greatest joy in life comes from serving Him. To you that are here today, let Christ be the cornerstone of your life today. You that are listening by radio, let Christ be the cornerstone of your life today. Christ is also the cornerstone of our hope. Many look at the future today and are petrified at what they see. As long as you only look at the headlines, I think you can't help but be frightened. But we know that Jesus is not only the Savior, He is the Lord. He is the Lord of the future. And our future is secure when we're trusting Him. We know also that someday He will come again and that in that day His Lordship will be fully seen. But until that day, we are told in Luke 19, 13, by Him, occupy until I come. And that is why we lay this cornerstone of this building today, because we know that until the Lord comes again, we are called to be faithful. Faithful to Him, faithful to the task He's given us, faithful to what Wheaton College stands for. And I would like to say this because I've been asked it several times. What is the involvement of myself and our association in this building? I'm going to tell you. This building is a gift by us to Wheaton College. It'll be owned and controlled by the Board of Trustees of Wheaton College. My involvement will be to be on the board of Wheaton College and once in a while stand up and say, if they ever get off track, let's get back on track for Christ and His kingdom. Because that's what this building is all about. But that's the only involvement that we have. This is Wheaton College's project from the moment of dedication next September on. And by the way, I'd like to congratulate the builders because they're four months ahead of schedule and I have never heard of that in building any building. And lastly, I would like to say, may this cornerstone remind us of all the things that have been said today and all the things that were said when we turned the first spade full of dirt, of the things as long as this building stands. May it stand for Christ and his kingdom. Thank you and God bless you.